Today we will see the story of Ganga. How Ganga happened on the planet Earth. Ganga is considered as a river which is there in the higher locus. It was there with the Kamandalu of Brahma. Means, this is the energy, this is the water energy of existence. Brahma means a creator. The energy which creates the whole existence. You see Brahma, you, will, you can see four things with him. One is the Kamandalu, means the water energy. Another one is the palm leaves, Veda, knowledge, wisdom. Then Akshamala means Japamala. Akshamala means, Akshamala represents the vibrations, sounds. Through all these things, and then the swan will be there. Hamsavagana. The swan, Hamsa represents continuous meditation. Hamsa means continuously meditating. If you see the sound of your inhaling and exhaling, it will be hum, sum. It will go as a hum and come out as sum. When they say hum, sum, they mean continuous awareness. Creator has to be with continuous awareness. Only with awareness you can create. Creativity and awareness is directly connected. That is why Brahma is described with Akshamala, means vibrations. Pustaka, means the knowledge, Vedas. And the Kamandalu, water energy. And Hamsam, awareness. Man who has reached the ultimate awareness, the Parama awareness is Parama Hamsa. Hamsam means awareness. Man who has reached the ultimate awareness is Paramahamsa. Ganga is the water energy of Brahma. She was there in his Kamandalu. I will describe the scene how the Ganga happened on the planet Earth. First, I will tell the story, then you will see the deeper meaning of that metaphysical story. There was a king called Bhagiratha. For some reason, his forefathers have been cursed by some rishi and they all died. They have been red burnt, reduced to ashes. All their ghosts are living there, struggling, suffering. They are not liberated. So they beg Bhagiratha to help him some way. Bhagiratha decides, I have to do something and liberate. He starts meditating, doing penance, doing tapasya towards Brahma. Brahma appears and gives darshan and he says, yes, I can send the Ganga to the planet earth, no problem. But be very clear, can planet earth hold the Ganga's speed? Will planet earth, can planet earth sustain the force of Ganga? First, do something for that, arrange for it, then I will send the Ganga. Then again he starts doing penance, doing tapasya. After the tapasya, Shiva appears. Shiva asks, what do you want? Then Bhagiratha says, now Brahma accepts to send the Ganga to planet earth. But he says, the whole planet earth will be washed away. 
planet earth cannot withstand the speed of ganga please do something you have to protect us you have to take care of us shiva says all right i'll take care don't worry tell brahma to send ganga i'll take care he gives the assurance then again he meditates towards the brahma now brahma appears and says i am ready to send but devatas are not ready to depart with ganga devatas wants ganga to be there bagirdas what for devatas wants ganga to be there no they have to take bath in ganga every day it is their life source ganga is not simple water it is a energy by bathing in that only every day they rejuvenate their body and mind and anybody takes bath in ganga every day naturally their body and mind will be rejuvenated that is why in this hilly area no medic and medical facilities practically nothing but see how many millions of people are living happily happily they are living ganga is the mother who is protecting everybody so the brahma says they have to take bath every day then bagirath says all right i'll arrange the arrange all the facilities for devatas to stay in the planet earth just on the banks of ganga i'll create cities where all gods and goddesses can live and have bath every day and have their regular routine as they have in the other loka as they have in the brahma loka Brahma says, "If that is the case, then I agree. Go ahead and do it." Then he comes and does tapasya towards Himachala, the Himal Hills, Hema Parvata, the Himaraj, who is the father-in-law of Shiva. He does tapasya towards the Himaraja. Himaraja appears and asks, "What do you want? I want you to be the host for Mother Ganga. I want you to be the host for Mother Ganga." and you are the person in whom i can create a city for all the devatas and only from you the ganga can flow you are the only person who can be base for ganga who can be base on which ganga can flow and flow towards the planet earth you see whenever they put the street taps in india water taps you can see straight away when it falls where the water falls they will have a stone so that the erosion will not happen once the water falls then it can flow there will be no erosion but falling time for that force you need a strong stone as a base so that the erosion will not happen so only you can be a strong stone on which ganga can land then afterwards it can flow towards the planet earth please help me you have to be the base then imaraja says how can i host her she is the computer of my daughter actually she is supposed to be the ganga is considered to be the feminine energy of shiva imaraja's daughter is parvati parvati is the wife of Shiva, how can I host her? After all, she is my daughter's competitor. Competitor. Of course, after all, this guy is not. He is. He sees all the social things. Then the girl that does the first words, Parvati. Mother appears and asks, "What do you want?" Then he says, "Maas, I want a Ganga to come to the planet Earth." I wanted your father to be a host, but he says Ganga is competitor of competitor of you. How can he host Ganga? She says, "Who said she is my competitor? I am she. She is me. After all, mother is enlightened. She is a devi, goddess. She says, 'How can somebody be competitor? I am Ganga. She is 
she gives a beautiful explanation, a metaphysical explanation, you will all understand. Important idea. Every woman has got the aspect of mother and beloved. Mother and beloved. Woman who has realized the mother and beloved aspects in herself is only the fulfilled woman. She says she is the woman as feminine aspect of me. I am the mother aspect of her. That is why in the traditions of Hinduism, all gods will be described with two wives. Don't think two persons. No. Two energies of same women. Valli Devasena. Devasena is the mother energy. Valli is the women energy. See, the women is supposed to be the beloved and mother of a husband. So, the person who has realized both the dimension becomes goddess. She becomes goddess. So, when they describe all these gods having two wives, don't think they are polygamous. No. They are not with two women. No. The two energies, their wives are so great. They have reached such a peak. They have realized both the energies which is inside them. They care for the universe as a they care for care the husband as the beloved and as the mother. If you are missing some one aspect, you are missing something. You are not complete. When a man becomes enlightened, he radiates the feminine and masculine aspects. He integrates both and he, be, he becomes both. When a woman becomes enlightened, she integrates the mother and beloved aspects and she radiates both. Uma says, she is my feminine aspect. She is my beloved aspect. I am the mother aspect. So she is not my competitor. She is not competing with me. She is complimenting me. When she goes and tells Imaraja, hoster, Imaraja accepts that she, that Imaraja will host her. Then Bhagirada starts building the whole city throughout the route in which Ganga is supposed to travel. He meditates on every hill and takes permission. He prays to every hill. Every hill says, yes, I will give the way for Ganga. So all the whole route is cleared. Then he goes and prays to Kalabhairava, who is the in charge of city Varanasi. Kalabhairava is the in charge of Varanasi city. He meditates towards Kalabhairava. Kalabhairava appears and says, what do you want? I wanted, please give us the way for Ganga. You should receive Ganga and give us the way. Kalabhairava says, surely I will give, don't worry. But this is such a holy city. Tell Ganga to take a do a production of the city and go. Do a production of the city and go. He says, Yes, I will surely tell Ganga. And Ganga accepts that. Kalbair was command and she takes the U-turn. Means the Uttara um, Uttara Vagini. She is called Uttara Vagini in Kasi. Usually Ganga flows only towards the ocean. Suddenly she takes a turn. There is no hill that you should understand. There is no hill on which she hits and turns. Here she hits a hill and takes turn in Himalayas, in the Uttarashi. But in the Kashi, there is no hill. And just the sand meadows. And she takes a turn and goes. Then when all the arrangements are ready, then he meditates towards the Brahma. Suddenly, Brahma comes up with the next trouble, next problem. 
you meditated and propitiated all the devatas except Vishnu. Now you have to do something to Vishnu. Only then I can send Ganga. Then he started meditating towards Vishnu. He prayed the Vishnu. The tapasya, Vishnu appeared. What do you want? I wanted the Ganga to come down to the planet Earth. Unless you agree, unless you give blessings, it will not be possible. Please bless me. Krishna says, all right. I bless you. Ganga will come to the planet Earth. She will come just out of my feet. And he blesses. The Ganga will come out of his feet. Then he says a beautiful, one more word, whomsoever has realized the Vishnu Maya, means the universal consciousness, whatever water comes out of their feet will be Ganga. Whomsoever has realized the Vishnu Mayam Jagat, whomsoever has realized me, from their feet, whatever water comes out, will be Ganga. From this word only the tradition of Pada Bhuja starts. Pada Bhuja of enlightened masters starts from this tradition. Vishnu says, whomsoever has realized the Vishnumayam Jagat, Sarvam Vishnumayam Jagat, from their feet Ganga will flow. From their feet Ganga will flow. Then, now he again meditates towards Brahma. Brahma appears with all his glory and compassion, blesses the Bhagavata. Then he prays to Gandhama. Then he does tapasya towards Gandhama, meditates and invites the Ganga mother, Ganga with all, with all compassion. Not only compassion, the wild energy. She just comes out of the Brahma's Kamandalu with all the power. She straight away started moving towards the planet Earth. The moment she came out of the Kamandalu and started moving the planet towards the planet Earth, all the 14 worlds are shaken. All the Devatas, all the Rishis, all the Munis simply they escaped from their planet Earth and ran away. Because they got frightened, the palaya is going to happen. Means the end of the world has come. Such a power, they simply ran away from their world. They escaped. And appears Shiva. Shiva beautifully appears and puts his head in between the Ganga. She straight away lands into Shiva's head. Into the matted lock. The next thing, she gets locked in the hair itself. She is black. Here, Bhagirada is sitting, 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 waiting for Ganga, for one kalpa. What has happened? We are receiving the call, she has started already. But she has not landed. Already she has started, but she has not landed here. What happened? What happened in the way? Again he meditates towards Shiva. Shiva appears and says, Yes, she is there in my head. Now what do you want me to do? Bhagirava says, Please just send her a little bit. Don't hold the whole thing. Then she says, Oh, is it so? All right. Then just, he moves one hair. Just he does. Only one hair moves. And from the one hair gap, just Ganga comes out and lands on the Himalayas. And comes, that is the river which is flowing throughout this planet Earth. And that is the perennial source. That is the Ganga. By flowing through this way, she fills the ocean. Understand? The story says, the ocean itself is son of Ganga. Varuna Raj is son of Ganga Mata. Water is supplied to the ocean by Ganga. That is the story. Originally there was no ocean. There was no water on the planet Earth. It is 
through Ganga first water came to the planet Earth. And because of Ganga flowing continuously, all the oceans are created. It is from Ganga, original water source started. Then she goes and merges into the Samudra, Samudra Raj, the sun of Ganga Mata. She lives here as an energy, as an embodiment of energy, blessing the people, giving them the outerworldly, outworldly things and the inwardly spiritual bliss. She is Iga Bara Suga Dayin. She gives everything of the outer world and everything of the inner world. You can see literally. It is because of her this whole country has become prosperous. It is because of her everything has happened. She gives the comforts of the outer world and bliss of the inner world. And she is gracing the world by being in this planet Earth, blessing the whole universe. And one more important thing, when Ganga came, she washed, washed all the ashes of Vajiratha's four fathers and liberated all of them and they have ultimately enlightened Vajiratha and she is here liberating people.